As the Atlanta Braves continue to look for ways to upgrade the starting rotation this offseason, could one move be to trade Marcelo Zuna? I'll answer that question and many others on today's mailbag episode, so let's get into it. You are Locked on Braves, your daily Atlanta Braves podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, welcome back to Locked On Braves, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, where we cover your favorite Atlanta sports teams each and every day. I am your host, Jacob Mastriani. You can follow me on social media at Shortstop Ball. Also, make sure you check out my written work over at BravesToday.com. Make sure you follow the podcast on social media as well at Locked On underscore Braves. Send in any questions, comments, or feedback you have for the podcast. Try to make this podcast as interactive with you as possible in today's entire podcast will be built upon questions you sent me over at Lockdown underscore Braves on X. So thank you so much for submitting those questions. If you are new and watching on YouTube, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button of over 8,000 subscribers now. So we're making our push towards 9K. Hopefully get there soon. Got a lot coming up here with the winter meeting. So if you're not subscribed, make sure you go ahead and do so. Hit that thumbs up button. Thanks to everybody in the comment section here with me live telling everybody, we're reminding everybody to hit that thumbs up button. Appreciate it the support there. And I don't always ask for this, but if you're listening on audio, do me a favor, go to Apple, Spotify, wherever, leave me a five-star review if you would. That's another way that you can help support the podcast. And I am doing this live. I do a lot of these off-season episodes live. So if you want to join me for that, I usually start around 9 p.m. Central, 10 p.m. Eastern. Right now we got Nick C in here, Jeffrey Humphreys as well, George Guerrero, Lav S, Leland Hurt. Leland, sorry to hear about your cousin. I hope the family's doing okay. Prayers out to your family right now. Luke Martin as well. Joe Me, uh, uh, Arginis in here. Chuck, JL, Jessica, Chris Hester. Too much. Nick Harvey, Evan Hollingsworth, Josh Daniels. Thank you so much for joining live. Appreciate all the support, whether you're here joining us live or watching the replay. Appreciate all the support you give me here at Locked on Braves. This is our mailbag episode, so I got a lot of questions to answer on today's episode, Matt Mockin here as well says he's present. Joshua Thibault Th- Th- as well. Thank you so much for that. Do need to remind you today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. All right, we got to get started. Sorry for the long intro there, but do have a lot to talk about. And the main point I want to talk about today is the idea of trading Marcel Ozuna. You've kind of heard mentions of that. I believe we've talked about it on here a little bit, but then he had an article from Mark Bowman who somewhat, I don't want to say suggested, hinted at it, that it could be a possibility. A couple of questions from you about it as well. Braves guys ask, should the Braves target Solaire? and then use Ozuna in a trade package to get a young pitcher they can extend. Leland Hurt asked, will AA try to move Ozuna this offseason? So I want to start with that topic, and I wrote about this over at bravestoday.com. If you want to go check that out, you can see what I'm about to tell you in a written form. When I, Going through that article and the way that I wrote it up, I, I see this as potentially three reasons why you would trade Marcelo Ozuna, one being you think what happened last year was more of a fluke and that he's going to regress back to the player that he was for two plus years in 2021, 2022 in the first month of 2023, looking at the metrics, the underlying metrics, there's not really a case for that. It's not like, it's not like it was a fluke season by what he did. It's not like he had an exaggerated BABIP. you know, his batting average on balls in play was about 293, which is around league average. He hit the ball extremely hard as he always does and one thing I pointed out throughout the season with Marcelo Zuna is he wasn't just an all or nothing bat yeah again I said coming into last year I think you give him 500 at bats you're probably gonna get 30 home runs out of him but does he give you anything in between and what impressed me the most with Ozuna this year is he did give you stuff in between he took the ball the other way a lot more took his singles he he took his walks so I thought the approach from Ozuna was much better so there's nothing in my mind from this season that would tell me it's a fluke. But you could try to trade high on that value. Look, Braves were trying to give him away last year. 
last offseason and could not. They were even entertaining, taking on even worse contracts in pa Patrick Corbin and Madison Bumgarner. Now, I think he may have some value. However, I would pump the brakes. Braves guy talking about trading Ozuna for a young pitcher. I don't think you get much. Even the year Ozuna's coming off of, I don't think you're going to get much for a one-year rental. He does have the team option for $16 million the following year, so it's potentially a two-year deal, but he's a DH only at this point, and that's just a good chunk of money for a DH only. Now, he was one of the best, if not the best DH outside of Otani in baseball last year, but still, it's hard for me to imagine teams would be willing to give up too much for what could essentially be one year of Ozuna and with all the things that come along with him, the off-the-field stuff, which hopefully he's put behind him. And, you know, obviously 2023 went pretty smoothly both on and off the field as far as we know, but still he's going to have some of that off-the-field baggage and that's going to come along with him. So I just – I wrote this up in the article. I think at best you get a back-of-the-rotation pitcher, you get a veteran bullpen arm, or you get a, a, a lottery ticket prospect. I just – I don't – think the value is that high in a return for Marcelo Zuna. So in my mind, the only way, the only good reason, and I don't, I don't necessarily think it's a good reason, but the only way you would trade Marcelo Zuna is if you needed to free up money for other moves. And if we're doing that, I got, I got, I got bigger issues because I hope we're at a point where we don't have to, we don't have to create a hole by getting rid of our should have been Silver Slugger DH to go try to fix another hole. I would hope the Braves are at a point now where you can keep Marcelo Zuna for $18 million for one year and still have enough to go out and either trade for a starter or go out and sign a starter. I just I feel like we should be at that point with where this franchise is right now. So, again, the only legitimate reason I could see for trading Ozuna is if you needed that money to go make other moves. And again, if that's the case and that's what we're doing, it makes me feel a little bit worse about where this franchise is at right now, that they're not willing to just go all in because you trade Ozuna, that's a big hole at DH. And yeah, it, maybe it's a little bit easier to fill a hole at DH and even left field than it is some other positions, but still you're creating a hole by trying to fix one if that's what the Braves are doing. So I would have more questions and concerns about the Braves trading Ozuna. Maybe they feel they want to try to get something out of him because they they don't feel that he can replicate what he did in 2023. And look, I'm not saying he's going to hit 40 home runs again or even be that good. But again, just looking at the, the underlying metrics and the data, nothing in that suggests that what he did in 2023 was a fluke. So again, I just, Doc's card asked, how much value does Ozuna add to clubhouse chemistry? And that's a good point. 2023 flipped everything about Ozuna. He went from a guy that it looked like they were going to cut and just eat his salary and somebody that was potentially, you know, a clubhouse problem, at least from an outside perspective. And now we're looking at a guy who, again, should have won the Silver Slugger at DH. I think there's reasons why they didn't give that to him. And you're looking at a guy who a lot of other players in the clubhouse of all different nationalities said they really liked having Ozuna in the clubhouse. And, and took good advice from him. Talk about Michael Harris. He talked about how Ozuna helped him turn things around. So he went from being a guy who was on his way out, pot potential clubhouse cancer, to a guy that everybody in the clubhouse loves, and he's producing on the field. So, yes, everything has flipped around for Ozuna. As Nick C said, just keep Ozuna. And, and look, I was – you can go back and listen. I said, cut the guy, trade him, get whatever you can for him. He was an awful player for two years and a month. but. I just I don't I don't see the reason to trade him now just because I don't think the value you're going to get in a trade back from another team is all that significant and I'm I'm hoping we're not at a point where we're having to trade assets just to free up money. Again, then I got bigger issues with where the Braves are at right now. So, that was just one question. We got over 20 more to get to, so we're going to take our first break here and then I'll get back into those questions. Get in on all the action right now at FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if 
your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time than now. You got so many sports going on, NFL, NHL, NBA, college football, so much sports action that you can get involved in. And the app is so easy to use with a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. And right now, you go over to FanDuel. You can go look at the World Series favorites for 2024. You're going to see your Atlanta Braves up there as the current favorite at plus 600. You want to get in on the college football action this weekend, your Georgia Bulldogs. Spread's gone down a little bit. It was up to six and a half earlier in the week. It's back down to five and a half point favorites for Georgia. So you're feeling pretty confident in that. You can go over to FanDuel and put that bet down then on the Bulldogs. Go visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get in on the action of this NFL season. Also, make sure you visit FanDuel.com slash play safe for tools and resources to help you stay in control of the way you play. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Also want to remind you, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. All right, I have a lot of questions I'm going to try to get to here. I'm going to try not to rush all of them, but if there are some that can be answered quickly, I probably will do so. Joey Milby says, Lindsey Crosby over on Locked On MLB Prospects. Make sure you go subscribe to him. Mentioned Waldrop as an outside candidate for a pre-debut extension. Say he blows everyone away in spring training and AA is inclined to do it. Is it essentially a copy and paste of Strider's deal with one year difference for service time? <sighs> Probably, yes. I don't think that happens. Um, I still think there's a, I don't want to say a good bit. It's really just command, but it's something he struggled with for a while at the college level. And so I, I don't think it's just magically going to fix itself because those issues were still there even in his short professional debut. Um, so I don't see it happening right away. I think Striders, is, as you have seen now, it's a different case. I think the Braves are great at evaluating talent and knowing what they have, knowing who to get rid of, who to trade, who to extend. And I think Strider, they could see, he was going to be one of the better pitchers in all of baseball. I, I don't know that you could say that about Waldrop. So, it, it, look, it, Lindsey's right. If there's a you know a candidate on the Brave or in the Brave system right now that looks like that extension candidate for a young kid coming up, I think Waldrop is probably it. But I, I think you got to see him at the big league level first because there there are real command issues with him. Joey Milby, you can add one player to the current 26 man roster provided fully healthy. Who helps us the most in a playoff run? Just for the playoffs, Seas, Glass now, Beaver, Soto, or a Rosa Reina. I go with whoever has the best stuff, and that's probably between I'm going with a pitcher. Um, and that's probably between Cease and Glass now. I want to lean, probably going to lean Glass now if he is healthy. I think his stuff is very electric. He may not be able to go deep for you in a game, but if he can give you five innings, I'm looking at who can put up zeros for five innings because the way the Braves offense has been the past couple of postseasons, that's what we need is somebody that can go out there and just put up zeros. I think Glass now can do that for five innings and then you turn it over to that really good bullpen. So I'd probably say Glass now, again, if we're talking, they're going to be healthy and I'd probably go, go with Glass now in that situation. And then last one from Joey, you get to pick our new base coaches and bullpen coach. Who are you going with? Can Charlie Morton go ahead and be a bullpen coach? Maybe Josh Tomlin might be somebody good to bring back in that that bullpen coach kind of role. Uh, seem to be somebody they just like to stick around for that. You know, Jesse Chavez might probably come back for another year, but also somebody, you know, that maybe could slide right into that role. Um, you know, Martin Prado, David Ross, if he doesn't get a managerial job or, or guys I've mentioned as possible coaches. I heard somebody talk about maybe Andrew Jones as being that outfield first first base coach. I, I don't know if he has any interest in coaching, but – I honestly haven't looked that far into it. I do think Tuyasa Sopo is probably going to get one of those jobs. He's been the AAA coach for a while there. Uh, but I haven't put too much thought into who's going to be the coaches. But they do have three vacancies they're going to have to fill. Kaz Buckeye says, Randy feels like the ideal trade target for left field, a three-win player with potential for more. Uh, he was unlucky in 23. Defense has nowhere to go but up. And Braves have the prospect capital to make a competitive offer, unlike perhaps for Soto. Three years of control, how much do you give up? It's kind of like with all these trades I've talked about. I think for a guy like a Rosarena, because of the control, 
you're going to have to give up one of your top two prospects. I think that's what it's going to cost. Now, I think if you're going and getting Randy Rosarena, I think you get Glass now. And I honestly don't know that Glass now really helps the package that the Rays would get. I almost think you have to attach Glass now to a Rosarena to get anything of significance. Because like I've talked about with Glass now, I'm not giving much. I'm not giving up much of anything for Glass now. It's one year. It's $25 million. and he hasn't thrown, what, more than 130 innings in a season. So I almost think the Rays, to get something of significance, need to attach glass now to a Rosarena to get out of that money. Now, a Rosarena on his own, he can get a pretty good haul because of the three years of control that you have over him. But you're probably going to have to give up either A.J. smith Shaver or uh, Hurston Waldrop. You're probably going to have to give two, two of your top five pitchers. So J.R. Ritchie, Owen Murphy, Spencer Schwellenbach, somebody – probably one of those as well. I mean, it's going to be an expensive package. I do think the Braves could put something together for him. Uh, I didn't realize the defense was that bad. Negative six OAA last year. I thought he was a much better defender than that, but it's left field. You know, you can kind of live with that out there, uh, but it would be a pretty, pretty good package. Kaz Buckeyes also says, do you expect a defensive rebound from Ronald in 2023? I, I don't want this to sound the wrong way. I don't. I honestly don't care. <laughs> like it's bad to say that. I would love for Ronald to turn into the gold glove defender. I, I thought he could be in right field one day. I, I just don't care. I, I mean, as long as Ronald is doing what he does at the plate and look, he's got his arm alone saves you run just the threat of his arm. People don't realize that. And I don't think it's quantified in any kind of statistic, but you watch a game and you can see runners hesitant to try to go from second to third on a ball hit to right field. You see runners at third base that are hesitant to go home just because of his arm. So his arm alone helps prevent runs. And I think he's I think he's better defensively than what the metrics say. Yes, he gets bad jumps, doesn't make the best reads, but his speed still allows him to get to a lot of baseballs. Do I think he can be better? Yes. But in all honesty, I don't know that I care. <laughs> I mean, if the guy's going to win MVPs, like he is offensively, and he still has that cannon of an arm. I, I get the hesitancy out there because of where the injury occurred. Uh, you know, why he may be a little bit more shy or hesitant, whatever you want to say defensively in right field. But uh, again, I know it's bad of me to say, I, I just don't care. <laughs> I, I just don't care. As long as Ronald stays healthy and keeps doing what he does at the plate, let him be a, an average to slightly below average defender out there with one of the best arms in baseball. Bellfire says, with the moves made so far, do the Braves have the best bullpen in all of baseball? Probably going to do a deeper dive on this in a full podcast later in the offseason because it's a good question, but we kind of have to see how the rest of the offseason shakes out. But certainly things are stacking up for the Braves to have one of the best bullpens. Like I don't think a lot of fans realize that the Braves bullpen last year was one of the best. I believe it was top six, at least top ten in all of baseball. But you talk about Iglesias, you talk about you know, Joe Jimenez, who had a great end to his season. Pierce Johnson looked great with the Braves coming back. Obviously, A.J. Minter. You know, you throw in Aaron Bummer with that. Ronaldo Lopez, I think he's going to end up in the bullpen. And there's a lot of really good arms out there. So I think they they definitely have improved the bullpen, which, you know, already was a really good strength for them last year for the most part. Ron Stevens says, though left field and starting pitching issues that need to be addressed this offseason. However, do you think AA should address utility too? I love that our core players are everyday players, but baseball is a long season and longevity is crucial going down the stretch. So yes, I would love to see him upgrade the bench a little bit. And you saw him clear out you know, the bench. That was basically everybody that got non-tendered or traded. I uh, would love to see them get some quality backups. The problem is, you know, quality backups want a chance to go start somewhere. And so if they have an opportunity to go to, to Kansas City or the White Sox or some team that's rebuilding where they can play every day, that's where a lot of those quality players are going to go. The, the way that you get those quality depth and bench pieces is through the minor leagues, and it's why I've stressed so much the importance of having some quality up the middle you know, players in the organization. The Braves just don't have that right now. They just traded Braden Shoemake. You have Von Grissom. Next in line would probably be Luke Waddell. I talked about the Rule 5 draft. I think there could be some guys there. I mentioned a Freddie Zamora. Hasn't played above double A yet, but somebody who you know, has played at the college ranks. He's an older player. I think he's somebody you could put on the bench and at least be, feel good about him there defensively. 
Um, I talked about Nick Ahmed as maybe somebody you bring on to kind of replace him defensively, but I, I would love to see some better depth, but it's just hard to sign that because Braves players are going to play every day. And those guys are going to want to go somewhere where they think they have a chance to play every day. And that just doesn't come easy on this Braves team. All right, I got a lot more questions to get to here, uh, including some more about what the Braves could do. A, a question about what Merrifield as well, which I think is very interesting. And I've talked about before. I'll answer those questions and more next. Getting back into the list of questions here, Aegon says, does another three-team trade make sense if Braves are eyeing Cease? Chicago already has a lot of middle infield or a lot of infielders on their 40-man, so Grissom uh, may interest a third team more. Possibly. It is hard to predict a three-team trade and what really makes sense in a three-team trade, but um, you know there would have to be another team out there that just really wanted Von Grissom in order to make that deal happen. And I just don't know who that team would be, but Certainly could be a possibility. Scott McIntyre in another, uh, I didn't see that AA coming in another. I didn't see that coming AA move Braves trade for Bo Bichette, Jose Barrios and Alec Manoa, Jay's get Ozuna, Grissom, Elder, AJ Smith, Shaver, and Dodd AA and Bo agreed to an extension. That would definitely be a move. Nobody saw coming. I know there's been some sort of chatter about Bo Bichette getting moved. I think that's unlikely with where the Jays are. I just don't, See how it makes much sense for, for them. Um, but if he's available, certainly we'll look into it. I think that package, you know, is probably pretty fair uh, to get it done. I haven't I have to look a little bit more into it. But if Boba Shett's available, uh, I think, you know, definitely would be uh, one to go look at. Chris Hester asked, Yamamoto is a gamble. Will, will the Braves take it? Uh, Protect PR said no rumors on Yamamoto. We haven't heard nothing. There is a 45-day window there for him to sign. So it could take a while while he, you know, takes in all these options that he has. You know, a lot of teams are in on it. The only reports I have seen is that it it sounds like the price for him just continues to go up. And if that's the case, I got to imagine the Braves are probably out on him. And Nixie said the Blue Jays said they're keeping uh, Bichette. Makes sense. I think that was very highly unlikely that it happens. Another one from Scott, Scott McIntyre. Do you think Whit Merrifield could be a fit for the Braves? Veteran player who shouldn't cost much. Yes, I wrote about this one as well. I, I think he could be a fit for the Braves. You talk about upgrade your utility. You bring in a Whit Merrifield. You also have Von Grissom in here. You have guys that can play outfield, potentially Von Grissom play in the outfield, and you got guys that can play on the infield as well. And who better to mold or shape Von Grissom into that super utility role than a Whit Merrifield? So, again, depending on the price, I think he could be a really solid fit for the Braves. Brent, when, when Tommy says, at this point, I'd rather sign, uh, re-sign Eddie Rosario over seven, eight million to play left field. You know what you're going to get, and he might get hot at the right time in the playoffs. What are your thoughts? I mentioned that as well. Uh, I think it would be, I think that'd be a January move. I think Alex is going to explore all of his options right now. And I think if we get to January, then you don't have anything else, then go ahead and get Von or go ahead and get Eddie Rosario, maybe a little bit less than seven to eight million, maybe five to six million if you can. Uh, save a million or two there because you did have to pay him for the buyout. Um, then I would, you know, I would try to bring Eddie back again. But I think Alex is going to explore all the options. JDK, Jake, what's a compelling offer? Compelling offer you'd make for a Rose Arena? He is the answer for left field. Three more years of control, low AAV, great clubhouse fit, and insanely clutch in October. So, kind of already mentioned a, a package. I think that would fit that, and I do think it would have to lead off with either AJ Smith Shaver or Hurston Waldrop, and then one of your other top five uh, pitching prospects. Uh, answer the question from Braves guy. Another question from Leland Hurt. Will AA aggressively try to keep Freed and pursue another quality starting pitcher or will he abandon the Freed situation altogether and pursue a quality starting pitcher plus left fielder? I hope we groom Grissom for left field. I think the Freed thing is out the window. I mean, things can always change, but with how aggressive they were on Nola, that to me signified that they believe Freed is gone after next year. So I think they're exploring other quality starting pitching options. Ron Stevens, do you think the Braves should intervene and pull Acuna out of the winter league? He's been hit twice on the hands, wrist area in a short period of time. This is a tough question. You want to keep the guy happy. He says playing and continuing to play down there makes him a better player. You got to be careful and protect the asset. I mean, that is a huge loss if something happens 
to Acuna. Um, I, I don't know what the I don't know what the answer is. Um, I, I'd have to know what the conversations are like with Acuna if he is open to it or if he is just you know adamant saying I want to play in Venezuela. And if that's the case, I'm not going to. I'm not going to risk upsetting my star player. Not that you should have to cater to one player, but the guy wants to play and wants to play for his home country. I love it. And I like watching him. It gives me something to watch here uh, in the off season, but he is a huge asset for your team and a big part of you winning. So I don't know what the right answer there, to be honest with you, the right answer from the Braves perspective is yes, probably, Hey, cut this out, get ready, you know, for the season. But how do you say that to a guy who loves playing for his in front of his country and loves playing the game that much? So uh, it's a tough, tough one to answer in my mind. Chris Green's number one fan. Two questions. What do you think the trade value is for someone in the lower level guys like Elder Vines, etc.? Thoughts on trading for uh, Leover Paguero or signing Joey Gallo? So the Paguero one is pretty interesting. And one I haven't thought about with the Pirates, they obviously have a shortstop in O'Neill Cruz who, Looks like he's going to be healthy this year. Uh, that one could be an interesting one. Um, again, I don't know what they, they they need pitching, obviously. So I think they could match up in that deal. And it sounds like Paguero could stick at shortstop. I, I don't, I don't think signing Joey Gallo is necessarily a good deal unless he if he wants to be a bench player. Uh, I, I guess. I mean, the defense is pretty solid still for Joey Gallo. I don't love it. And then who do you? What do you think the trade value is of some of the lower level guys like Elder Vines, etc. I don't think it's I don't think it's great. I don't think you're going to get much for any of those guys. They're they're throw-ins in bigger trades as part of bigger trades. They're if you do a trade with the White Sox and you give up AJ Smith Shaver, you throw in Bryce Elder because it gives them somebody to give them innings right now. Their value is not high. I know the trade evaluator everybody uses online. It's highly overvaluing Bryce Elder right now. JDK technical question: Do the Braves have to fill their 40 man at some point, or could they leave it open? for flexibility. They can leave it open. You don't have to have it filled. Some teams might leave a spot or two open during the season, uh, but no, you do not have to have it filled. Uh, Brent Wontanabe says, how would you evaluate AA's track record signing free agent pitchers? I remember Bartolo Colon's, Cole Hamels, Drew Smiley being regrettable deals. What's the largest deal he's completed with the Blue Jays or Braves? So I can't recall anything for the Blue Jays, but with the Braves, it has been, you know, veterans on short-term deals. Obviously, the Cole Hamels one. I don't remember if he was the Dallas Keuchel one. Um, you know, Drew Smiley, those haven't necessarily worked out. I'd say Charlie Morton's really the only one that's worked out, and he's kept him around. So um, I think in that regard, he hasn't made a deal that has come back to just absolutely crush the Braves. But he also hasn't gone out on a limb and really signed a big free agent starting pitcher to a long deal so it depends on how you view that he hasn't really made a deal that's killed you but you know outside of maybe the morton deal he hasn't really signed a pitcher that you know has been great either um so again it just kind of depends on how you how you view that braves guy do you think the braves extend alex anthopolis before his contract is up next year i hope so i, I love alex anthopolis i think he's done a great job of building this team to not only be a winner for now but a consistent winner in the future Hayden Harris, predict the five-man starting rotation for opening day 2025. So I'll go Strider, Freed, Dylan Cease. I think that happens. Charlie Morton and Bryce Elder. I think those are your, your starting five. What will likely happen and what typically happens for the Braves is somebody will have a little hiccup in spring training and you'll see Dylan Dodd or Darius Vines in an insert, in an inserted into the rotation. So your opening day rotation will probably be a little bit different, but if everybody's healthy, that's my prediction for the starting five. Joshua Daniels, if there was a move made by the Braves, be it trade or free agency, that is really and financially doable but widely shocking, what would it be to you? Something for a shortstop, something like the trade for Boba Shett we talked about earlier, something that we are not looking to. And I kind of mentioned this on yesterday's podcast with Grant McCauley. If you haven't checked that out, make sure that you do so. Our winter meetings preview. Make sure you go check that out. But I, I mentioned there, you know, we're all looking at the starting pitcher market. We're still somewhat looking at the left field market, but I think those talks have kind of died down. There's not really much focus on that. And it feels like when that's the case, that's when AA kind of, you know, he zigs when everybody zags. 
So it would not surprise me if he is looking at upgrading the shortstop position in some way in a move we haven't really thought of. That would be one that I guess it wouldn't shock me because I'm still kind of looking for it, but uh, I think that would be one that probably shocks a lot of people. Three more questions here. Ramsey Latimer, what's the report on Bond Grissom playing in Puerto Rico? The report was that he's supposed to start sometime in December. I checked rosters today, December 1st. I didn't see his name on any of those, so I'll try to keep you updated there when I see he's been added, and certainly we'll keep you up to date on where he is playing. Chris Green's number one fan. With how bad the Padres have been and their need to cut money, could Joe Musgrove be a trade target? Not sure what that deal is. Uh, I try to look it up really quickly while I'm talking here, but I know he he's a home uh, hometown kid there from uh, the California area, so I know that's a you know a big deal for him playing there. It's a five year. $100 million deal that goes through 2027. I'm not sure how much he's making a year here. Looking this up real quickly, $20 million a year. So I think that's probably fair for what Joe Musgrove can give you. I don't know if he's been – he threw 180 innings in 2021 and 2022, but only 97 last year. So had been somewhat durable uh, before this past season. Somebody that's a you know three to, to high three ERA, somebody in the, the three – range so i think that's a solid number three starter and 20 million a year especially in free agency that's probably what it's going to cost you so i don't think it'd be a terrible move depending on obviously what you have to give up in that but be a good bit of money for somebody who like i said probably is a, a number three starter carter smith says jake for new braves bench coach let me take it i had to move the family uh, over to atlanta though but uh certainly would love to do that love to just sit on that bench and watch this team play because i love watching this team play. I've watched some of the games going back from 2023, and man, I miss watching this team play. It's a lot of fun. Kenneth Clark says, any rumors on Hunter Renfro for the Braves? I, I can't remember what side it was out there, but somebody mentioned that it's a possible fit. I can see that. I think that's probably you know similar to like an Adam Duvall, right-handed power bat, can play a little bit of defense. Little Lee says, Trump is back as the catcher option. I am glad they got Chadwick Trump back. Uh, T. Raj Door says, could you do an episode on the pitchers who own the Phillies the most? <laughs> that might be interesting one to do as the Braves need to get as many of those as possible. And I see AG7 talking about things being quiet for about a week. We don't hear anything tomorrow before the winter meetings. And I think that's probably right. I'm a little surprised we haven't seen anything going up here lately. But you're right with the winter meetings coming. Could be a bit quiet here until we get to those winter meetings. Miguel, if I missed your questions in here, I'm sorry. Tried to prioritize the ones sent in on social media, but thanks for joining, being here for the podcast. Thank all of you for being here for the podcast, whether you're listening live or watching the replay. Appreciate all your support here at Locked on Braves. But that will do it for this episode. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube if you're new. Hit that thumbs up button. Rate, review, subscribe to the Locked on Braves podcast wherever you get your podcast. And I will talk to you next time.